Hey, Buzz, what do you feel like doing today? Oh, not much, Space Ranger. What do you feel like doing? Oh, there should be something we should do. Like what? It's up to you, buddy. Um, hmm. Um, do you want to do something? Yeah, like what? I don't know, maybe read a book about something. Something like a truffula tree or something. Oh, cuz I love truffula trees Yeah, truffula trees are awesome. Uh, I love truffula trees So wait a minute. Are you talking about the Lorax? Yeah, the Lorax. I love the Lorax Me too uh, <laughs> Should we get the book or something so we can read it? Yeah, it's up to you buddy Okay, I can do that then. Uh, hold on a minute. Well, Buzz, I got the book. It's on the bed beside you. Yep. Well, where is it? I told you, it's beside you. Oh, you did? Where? Like, a few inches? Oh, there it is. Hold on a minute. Yep, there it is. Yep, so today we're going to read it. Yep. So, do you like truffula trees? Well, today we're going to read the Lorax. Yep. The Lorax, indeed. Uh, I love the Lorax, don't you? Yeah, it's really cool, partner. <laughs> yeah, Space Ranger, indeed. Ooh, is that the Wunzler and the Lorax, partner? Yeah, it is, Space Ranger. Well, let's turn the page. The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Hey, Woody. Yeah, Buzz? Why don't you read this? Okay. At the far end of town where the grass grass grows And where the wind smells sour and slow Slow and sour when, the, when it blows Sorry, I got confused there. It's all right. And no birds ever sing, excepting all girls. In the sea, in the street is the street of the lifted Lorax. Oh, you're a good singer, Woody. Thank you. And deep in the grickle grass, some some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today. Where the Lorax once stood, ju just as long as it could, before somebody lifted the Lorax away. Hmm, nice one, Woody. Thank you. What was the Lorax, and why w was it there, and and why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old Wunzler still lives here. Ask him. He knows. The Wunzler was my favorite character. I know, Woody. You won't see the Wunzler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkin on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkin. Cold under the roof, where he makes his clo where he makes his own clothes, out of miff muffer moof. <laughs> Funny, yeah. <laughs> on, and on top special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the sh shutters, <laughs> and sometimes he speaks, and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps. If you, er, if you're willing to pay. Oh, that's sad. I know, Woody. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in fifteen cents and a nail and a shell of a great 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 grandfather's nail. Oh. <laughs> Then he pulls up the pail, makes a post carefully, makes a most carefully 
sorry, I'm, I'm a, that, uh, most carefully count to see if you were, if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you've paid him away in his snub. <laughs> That's hilarious. His secret strange hole. His secret strange hole in his gravelous glove. Aw. Then he grunts. I will call you by whisper my phone. For the secrets I tell for you or for your ears alone. That's odd. I know, Woody. Slup. Down slups the whisper my phone to your ear. And the old onceler whispers, You are not very clear since you, they have the own they have to come down sorry I got confused there Woody I know Buzz <sighs> through a snigger hose then and he sounds if he had as if he had s smallish bees up his nose now I'll tell you he he says with his teeth sounding gray how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back. Such a long, long time ago. Time back. Yep. Ooh, truffula trees. I know, Woody. You like them? Yes, I do. Alright, um, way back in the days when the grass was green, was still green and the pond was still wet and all the clouds were clean, still clean, the, and the song was, and the song of the some, me, swami swans rang out in space. One morning I can, I came to this glorious place, and I first saw the trees, the truffula trees. I love the smell of them. Yeah, I know, Woody. The truffula trees, <laughs> the, the bright colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. Aww. Yeah, I know, Woody. <laughs> More truffula trees. Aww, and those cute bears. Barbaloots, yep. And under the trees, I saw brown barbaloots, yep. Frisking about in their barbaloot suits. Yeah, that's so cute. I know, Woody. As they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the ripulous pond came, came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. Aw, that's so adorable. I know. The, but those trees, those trees, those truffula trees. All my life I'd been searching for those, for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk. And they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. Yes, they did. I love that. I know you do, Woody. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew what I, I knew just what I'd do. I unload my cart. More truffula trees, and he's building an office. <gasps> is that a need? Yeah, it is, Woody. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down one, one truffula tree. A truffula tree in one chop, and with a great skillful skill, and with a great speedy spade, I took the soft tuft 
and I needed it, needed, needed a sneed. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I know, Woody. Uh-oh, the Lorax. I know, Woody. The instant I finished, I heard a gazump. I looked and I saw a pop of a thump, of a stump of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him. That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. And, and he spoke with a voice that was a sharpish that was sharpish and bossy. Who? I know, Woody. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax, and I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I am asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs, what? He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What is that thing you made out of my truffula tree? Like truffula stuffed. Yeah, I know, Woody. Look, Lorax, I said, there is no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree, and I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. Just this thing is a sneed. A sneed's a fine something. That's all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, for curtains, or curtains, or covers, or bicycle seats, for bicycle seats. <laughs> the Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy such a full sneed. Yeah, I know. I love sneeds. I know you do. Dang it. Um, but the very next minute, I proved I, that he was wrong. For just that, at that minute, a chap came along, and he thought that he, that the sneed I needed was great. He happily bought it for thirty eight for three ninety eight cents. Thir Wait a minute, three ninety eight. Yeah, silly me. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. Yeah, Woody. That is very funny. I know. <laughs> I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I am busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed to... I rushed across the broom, and in no time at all, built a radio phone. I put it. I put in a quick call. I called my brother, all my brothers, and uncles and aunts, and I said, "Listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road." To North Niche. Turn left at which we can row sharp. Right at South Sitch. The, the st stitch. G good job. Thank you. The needs. Cool. I know, Woody. Uh, and in no time at all, in the factory I built in the the whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. 
We were all knitting sneeds, just as busy as bees, the to to the sound of chopping of truffula trees. Aww. Then, oh, baby, oh, how my busy did grow. Now chopping one tree at one time, it was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, <laughs> which whacked off four truffula trees at one smacker. We were making sunnies four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. No, he didn't, Woody. Oh, poor fellas. They look hungry. I know. But next, but the next week, he knocked on my uh, new office door. He snapped. I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I am also in charge of the Barbaloots, who played in the shade in their Barbaloot suits and happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruit to go around. And my poor Barbaloots are all getting the crummies. Because they have gas and no food in their tummies. Oh, I know, Woody. That's kind of funny. I know. They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They all have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. Oh, that's sad. I know. I, the Onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow. R regular, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. I know. Sunnids. Yep. I meant no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger, I got... I biggered my factory. I biggered my roads. I biggered my wagons. I biggered my... I biggered the loads of the Sneeds I shipped out. It was shipping them forth to south, to east, to west, to north. I went on beggaring, selling more than needs, and I had bi and I beggared my money with, which everyone needs. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Uh, then again, the, he came back. I was fixing my, some pipes with that old machine. Musence, with that old musence. Lorax came back with more grips. Gripes. Psychopath. Uh, silly me. Uh, I am the Lorax, he coughed. And he whiffle, whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled. He s snargled. He sniffed. Once there, he cried again. He cried with a cruffless croak. Monster, you're making such a smuggler smoke, smuggler smoke. My poor swami swans, they, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing. Who was who has smog in his throat? Aw, that's sad. I know, Woody. And so, said the Lorax, P please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may f have to fly north. They, they may have to fly for a month. 
or a year to escape from this from the smog you've smogged up around here <sighs> what's more snapped the Lorax he his dander was up let me say a few words about gluppity glop you m your machinery chugs on day and night without stop make gloppity glop and shoppity slop and what do you do with this leftover goo i'll show you you dirty old onceler man you no i know Aw, poor hummingfish, I know. Uh, you're governing the pond where the hummingfish hum hummed. No more can they hum for their gills. They're all gummed. So I'm sending them off too. Oh, their future of dirty. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully wary. Uh, in search of some water that isn't so smear, smarty, smeary. Yeah, I know. Aw. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap yap and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more truffula trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. Yeah, that's good, Woody. Thank you. Well, there's only one truffula tree left. I know. And it's gotten chopped. I know. Um, and that and at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From the outside in the fields came a sickering smack of an axe on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffula tree of them all. Aw, that's sad. I know. No more trees. No more sneeds. No more... Whack to be done, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts and everyone all waved me goodbye. They jumped into their into my cars and drove away under the smoke, smug, muggered stars. Mm. I know, that's sad, ain't it? I know, Woody. Now all that was left beneath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. Aw, oh, that is sad, I know. Well, there he goes. Yep. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance. Just gave me a very sad and backward glance. As he lifted himself up, as he lifted himself up by the pants, by the seat of his pants, and I'll never forget the grim look on his face. Then he heisted himself and took a leave of his place through the hole, through a hole in the smog without leaving the trace. Oh, that's sad. I know it is.
and all that the Lorax left here in the mess, in this mess, was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless, whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess, unless, yep, that was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I sat here and worried, and worried away, through the years, while my buildings have fallen apart, I worried about it with all of my heart. Yep, that's sad. There he is. Yep. But now, says the Wunzler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. No, it's not. Ooh, a truffula seed. Yeah. So, catch, calls the Wunzler. He lets something fall. It's a truffula seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds. And the truffula seed trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula treat. It will... Truffula treat. It with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow in a forest. Protect it from axes and ha that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends will may come back. Aww. That what? Ah. That was a good story. I liked that. Yeah, I know. So, what do you want to do next? I don't know. It's up to you, bro. Huh. I'm not sure what to do next. Well, it's up to you, dude. Aw, thank you. You're welcome. But that was a cool story. We took turns reading. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I love reading the Lorax. Truffula trees are my favorite. Mine too. <laughs>